Hello everyone, we're going to talk about section 4.4, which is going to be about logarithmic and exponential functions. So we've already talked about both of these separately in our last few sections, um, but now we're going to talk about them together, how they relate to each other, and some other rules that we can use when solving logarithmic and exponential functions. So first we're going to start with our logarithmic equations. So you can manipulate equations that contain only logarithmic terms in order to use the following fact. And that is to let u, v, and a be positive real numbers with a not equal to 1. And then we say if log base a of u is equal to log base a of v, then u is equal to v. So essentially what we're seeing here is that we, if we have the log of the same base, and if we set up an equation where we're applying the log of the same base on either side of the equation, then we can just say that whatever the items that are being taken the log of are equal to each other. So essentially, if we can set up an equation like this, we can basically ignore the logarithms and then we can just deal with whatever we're taking the logarithms of. So for example one, we'll put this into practice and we'll see that we're going to solve the following logarithmic equations with the fact above. So for part A, we have log base two of p plus nine minus log base two of p is equal to log base two of p plus one. Now we see here, we have two terms on the left and one term on the right. And our fact does not have a version of this. So what we need to do is that we need to simplify this so that we just have one term on the right and one term on the left. So we can use our logarithmic properties to simplify our equation further. So if we want to use some logarithmic properties, and we have a log of minus another log, we can use our quotient property. So we can use the quotient of the g quotient. All right, so if you don't quite remember the quotient property, this just allows us that if we have a log of the same base minus another log of the same base, then we can divide whatever we're taking those logarithms of. So in this case, we can rewrite this as log base two of p plus nine divided by p. So we can rewrite this, and then we have this is equal to log base two of p plus one. So now we see that we have logarithms of the same base on either side and one term on both sides. So we have log base two of p plus nine divided by p is equal to log base two of p plus one. So using our fact, using our fact, We get, we can rewrite this now. So, using this fact we have, we can drop our log base 2. So, this just becomes p plus 9 divided by p is equal to p plus 1. And now all we have to do is solve for p. So, let's multiply. by p on both sides, and we get p plus 9 is equal to p times p plus 1, which is the same thing as saying p plus 9 is equal to p squared plus p, so we just distributed that p there. And now we can subtract p from both sides, and this gives us 9 is equal to p squared, and since we had 1p on one side, we subtracted 1, so now we have just that 9 is equal to p squared. And let's subtract our 9 on both sides here, and we'll take this right over here. And this is going to give us p squared minus 9 is equal to 0. So we see here 
is that we can solve for p now since we have this equation that we see here. And if we factor this term, we're going to get p plus 3 and p minus 3. So in this case, we see that p is equal to positive and negative 3. The little plus and then minus sign is how we signify that it's positive and negative 3. But since we know that our value of p cannot be negative 3, so our answer is p is equal to 3. Since we can't have our negative terms inside of our logarithms, we know that p cannot be equal to negative 3. So we end up with our p is equal to 3, and then this will be our final answer. All right. Now we can go on to problem b here, and we have log base 3 of m plus 1 minus log base 3 of m minus 1 is equal to log base 3 of m. So we're going to do the exact same thing. We're going to even use quotient rule again. So we'll use for our quotient property. And this way, we can do the same thing as before. So we're going to get log base 3 of m plus 1 divided by m minus 1 is equal to log base 3 of m. And now I want to use the fact that we had before. I want to use fact. So this will give us m plus 1 divided by m minus 1 is equal to m. So now we have, all we have to do is solve for m. So let's multiply each side by m minus 1. So we'll say m minus 1 and m minus 1. We see here on this side these will cancel. And we'll get m plus 1 is equal to m times m minus 1, where if we simplify this, we'll get m squared minus m. And since we want to work with a polynomial that's equal to 0, we will subtract m on both sides. This gives us 1 is equal to m squared minus 2m. And we're going to continue this over here. So we have 1 is equal to m squared minus 2m. Then we can subtract 1 on both sides, and we get m squared minus 2m minus 1 is equal to 0. So you can take a moment and analyze this polynomial that we have here. And if you do, you realize that this is not easily factorable. So we'll need to use our quadratic equation. All right, doing this, if you remember, our quadratic equation, move this over here, is negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac divided by 2a. So that's our quadratic equation where we have these coefficients correspond to our a's and b's. So in this case, we have b is equal to negative 2. We'll start with a. a is equal to 1. Since we have m squared, that would be our first coefficient. And since it's just m squared, we know that our coefficient would just be considered 1. We have b is negative 2, since that's a coefficient in front of m. And then we have c is negative 1. 
All right, so now we can use our quadratic equation to find our roots here. So if we use this, we will get, if it's negative b, we have negative two, we would say negative, negative two, plus or minus, the square root of negative two squared minus four times one times negative one. This is all divided by two times one. So we can simplify this down a little bit. We're going to get two plus or minus is going to be four plus four. Let me try that a little bit here. Divided by two, two. Then we can simplify this down more. So we have two plus or minus eight, square root of eight divided by two. And we can factor um, we can factor eight out of our square root there. We can factor things out of it. We can't factor eight evenly, but we see here that we have two plus or minus the square root of two times four, which is we're going to be going far off the page here. So <laughs> we have two plus or minus square root of two times four divided by two. We know this is the same thing as saying two plus or minus the square root of two times the square root of four divided by two. Oof. Um, so our square root of four we know is just two, so this is going to be two plus or minus two times the square root of two divided by two. So now we can divide each one of these terms by two. And I'm going to move some of this so we're not quite going too far. So we'll push this up and we'll say here that this is going to be pushed up as well. So we're going to move that over to here. All right. So we're going to divide by two from each of these terms. So we're going to just end up with one plus or minus square root of two, or in this case, m. Now we're dealing with our plus or minus here again, and we know that we can't have a negative number as m. So we see that if m is equal to one minus the square root of two, that's going to give us a negative value, something around 0 0.7 or so. So we know that our answer is going to be m is equal to 1 plus our square root of 2. And that would be our answer. So we worked a little bit more complicated problems for a fairly simple fact. <laughs> um, and we saw that that fact being used early on in these types of problems. But they can get very messy, clearly. All right, so moving on, we see when an equation involves a constant and a logarithm, we can use algebra and our logarithm properties to make one side a single logarithm and the other side a constant, so we can use the following. If a and u are positive real numbers with a not equal to one, then a to the log of a, log base a of u, is equal to u. So we're seeing that our constant a is being raised to the power of a logarithm with base a of u. So basically what this fact is saying is that if we see a number being raised or have an exponent of a logarithm with that same base, they will essentially cancel each other out. So for example two here, which are also number seven, nine, and 13 in your book, we just wanna solve each logarithmic equation using this fact here. So we see for A here, we have log base three of six X minus two is equal to two. And what we want to do is we want to get each one of these questions in terms of this fact above. So we want to have three to the exponent of log base three of six x minus two. And since we have to do it to both sides, this means that 
each one of our sides of equation here is going to be an exponent of three. So we're going to take three to the log base three of six x minus two. And since we did it to the side, we'll do the other side. So we have three to the power of two. And this is how we're going to cancel out our logarithmic expression here on the left. Because now we see we can use our fact, can use our fact to get 6x minus 2 is equal to 3 squared. And we can evaluate for 3 squared. So we can say that 6x minus 2 is equal to 9. And now all we have to do is solve for x. So we can add 2 on both sides. We get 6x is equal to 11. We want to divide by 6. And we get that x is equal to 11 divided by 6. And that would be our final answer, since all we had to do was solve for x. Now we can move on to problem b here, where we have the log of x minus log of x plus 4 is equal to negative 1. And we see since we have these undefined bases in our logs, we know this automatically means log base 10 undefined. So we have log base 10. So we can rewrite this. We can say, since we know it's log base 10, we can say log base 10 of x minus log base 10 of x plus 4 is equal to negative 1. And now we can do the same thing as we did before. We want to get in this terms of our fact, so we're going to have each one of these terms as an exponent of 10. So I'm going to use our fact, and we're going to get 10 to the log base 10 minus, oh, oh x, <laughs> minus 10 to the log base 10 of x plus 4. No, oh, that's a negative one there. Is equal to 10 to the negative 1 power. And now we can simplify this using our fact. So we'll end up getting x minus x plus 4 is equal to 10 to the negative 1 power. Now if you see here, we're going to get x minus x plus 4 is equal to 10 to the negative first power. So we're going to see that our x's will end up canceling each other out. And we'll end up with 4 is equal to 10 to the negative 1 power. Now our x is canceled out, and we just have two values that are clearly not equal to each other. So we need to reevaluate our problem and redo it. Since we're wanting to solve for that x, we know that something along the way has gone wrong. So we can take another look at our problem, starting about here. So we have log base 10 of x minus log base 10 of x plus 4 is equal to negative 1. And like I said before, when we were working with the other fact, it's important to use your properties as well as you're moving through these problems so that you get exactly what you need from your fact. So, Let's use one of our log properties to simplify this problem down just a little bit more. So let's use our quotient property. And if we do that, then we're going to end up with log base 10 of x divided by x plus 4 is equal to negative 1. Now, let's use our fact. So we'll have each one of these terms as an exponent of 10, and we'll end up getting 10 to the log base 10 of x divided by x plus 4 
is equal to 10 to the negative 1 power. And we know we can use our fact here. And this will just give us x divided by x plus 4 is equal to 10 to the negative 1 power, which is going to be equal to 1 divided by 10. So now since we're solving for x, what we can do is that we can multiply each term by x plus 1, so it cancels on one side, and then we can divide each side by x, or we can cross multiply. So this is a trick that you may have learned at a much younger age, but we can cross multiply in order to get x plus 4 times 1 is equal to x times 10. And this is simplified to x plus 4 is equal to 10x. Now we just solve for x, so let's subtract x on both sides. This gives us, and let's go right up here. This is going to give us 4 is equal to 9x, so we can divide by 9, and we get x is equal to 4 divided by 9. All right, so just to reiterate, remember it's important to know when to use your quotient properties um, so we don't end up doing what we had the very first time in that equation. So now for part C, we have our natural log of x plus 9 minus the natural log of x is equal to 1. And we know that the natural log is basically like saying the log with base e. So we know that that is the case. We can use our properties as well for our natural logs. So let's use our quotient property. So let's use... quotient property, and I'm actually going to move this up, so let's move that right there. So if we use our quotient property, we know that this is going to become the natural log of x plus 9 divided by x is equal to 1. So now we're going to make each one of these terms an exponent of e. So this is going to become e to the natural log of x plus 9 divided by x is equal to e to the exponent of 1. All right, so we know that because of our fact, we're going to get x plus 9 divided by x is equal to e to the first power. Since it's just e to the first power, we don't have to write that one. We can just write e, since we know that e is a value of about 2.718. So now let's just simplify. So let's multiply by x on both sides. It's not an exponent, I'm just saying times x. We know that those will cancel. And we end up with x plus 9 is equal to e times x. Now we want to subtract x. And if we do that, we know we'll end up getting 9 is equal to ex minus x. So let's do a little bit of factoring here. And we'll continue this over here. And if we do a little bit of factoring, we can say that this is equal to 9 is equal to x times e minus 1. So we can factor out our x here. And now we can just simply divide by e minus 1. And this is going to give us x is equal to 9 divided by e minus 1. Or... You can also calculate this, and it should give you somewhere about 5.238.
All right, so now I've done a few problems using our previous facts. And now we want to move on to exponential equations. So we've done our logarithm equations, and now we're going to do our exponential equations. So we see if an exponential equation can be written as two powers of the same base, we can use this fact. Let a be a positive real number with a not equal to 1. And if a is, or if a raised to the power of u is equal to a raised to the power of v, then we have u is equal to v. So this is really similar to our first fact that we had for our logarithms, which will make sense since logarithms and exponential equations are related and they're basically just different ways of writing each other. So we'll do the same thing as we had before. So we want each one of these equations to be set up like our fact. So for example three, which is numbers 23, 26, and 28 in your book, we want to solve the following exponential equations using the fact above. So for a here, we have two raised to the power of x minus one is equal to eight. Now clearly they don't have the same base, but we know that we can rewrite eight as a power of two. So we can rewrite our equation. This will give us two to the x minus one is equal to two to the third power. Now, since we have this, we see that this matches our fact that we were given before. So now we can use our fact in order to get x minus one is equal to three. Then all we have to do is add one on both sides, and we'll get x is equal to four. So now we'll do the same thing each time here. So we see for part b, we have 81 raised to the exponent of negative 2x equals to 3 raised to the power of x minus 1. So once again, we do not have the same base in this case, but 81 can be rewritten as 3 to an exponent. So if we rewrite this, we know that 81 is going to be rewritten as 3 to the fourth power. And since we're just rewriting 81, we still have this exponent of negative 2x here. And then we want to keep 3 to the power of x minus 1. So we have 3 to the power of x minus 1. So now we have our basis 3, but we have an unsimplified term on our left side here. This 3 to the fourth power to the power of negative 2x. We want to simplify this so that we just have bases with exponents and we're not multiplying anything else. So we can simplify this. And if you have something with an exponent raised to another exponent, that means that we can multiply our exponents. So if we do this, we know that 81 to the power of negative 2x is the same thing as saying 3 to the power of negative 8x. And now we see that they have the same base with one exponent. And we can use our factor. So we'll say use fact to get negative 8x is equal to x minus 1. So we'll sub just subtract x on both sides. This will give us negative 9x is equal to negative 1. So we just have to divide by negative 9. We're going to have to continue this over here. So I'm going to scooch problem C over. So we have negative 9x equal to negative 1. Divide by negative 9. And we get that x is equal to 1 divided by 9. All right. And then lastly, you have problem C here, which is 16 to the power of x is equal to 64. Now this one's a little bit more tricky because 64 is not a power of 16. But if we think smaller, 16 is a power of 4, 
and 64 is also a power of 4. So we're going to use a base as 4 in, in this case that we have here. So we know that 16 can be rewritten as 4 squared to the power of x, and 64 is 4 to the third power. So now, just like last time, we're going to multiply our exponents here on the left, and this will give us 4 to the power of 2x is equal to 4 to the power of 3. And since we see that they have the same base, we're going to use our fact. To just get 2x is equal to 3, we'll divide by 2. And we get that x is equal to 3 divided by 2, or 3 halves. All right, so now we have some practice using that fact. So we can move on. We can say that exponential equations that have different bases can also be solved by using the power property of logarithms, which, if you do not remember, it was if u and r are real numbers with u greater than 0, then a natural log of u to the power of r is equal to r times the natural log of u. So now we're going to do here for example four, which is also checkpoint four in your book. We just want to solve each equation and we're going around to the nearest thousand. So this means that we're just going to take the natural log of both sides and then we're going to solve for x. So if we take the natural log of both sides here for part a, this is going to give us a natural log 2 to the x power is equal to the natural log of 7. Now we can use this power property that we just talked about, and we can simplify this so we have x times the natural log of 2. So now we have x times the natural log of 2 is equal to the natural log of 7. Since we're just solving for x, all we need to do is divide by the natural log of 2 on both sides. So now we get that x is equal to the natural log of 7 divided by the natural log of 2. And if you use your calculator, you know that this is about equal to 2.807. I just realized that I wrote these all very close together. So I'm going to spread some of these out here just real quick. Put that over there. And then put this one over there. All right, so now I got a little bit more room to do these brushes. So in this case, we have 5 to the power of m is equal to 50. So we're going to do the same thing as we did before. We're going to take the natural log of both sides so that we can simplify our left side. So we'll take the natural log of 5 to the m power is equal to the natural log of 50. So now we can use this property and we can take our 5, which is our exponent, multiply it to the front of our equation. So this is the same as saying m times the natural log of 5 is equal to the natural log of 50. Now we just divide by the natural log of 5. This is going to give us m is equal to the natural log of 50 divided by the natural log of 5, which if you use your calculator, is going to be about 2.431. All right, so now we can move on to problem C here. We have 3 to the y power is equal to 17. So let's do it one more time. So we'll do the same thing as before. We'll take the natural log of both sides. So now we can simplify our natural log of 3 to the power of y to y times the natural log of 3, which is equal to the natural log of 17. And we can divide each side by the natural log of 3.
this gives us y is equal to the natural log of 17 divided by the natural log of 3, which if you use a calculator is going to be about 2.579. Let's also move this down just a little bit. All right. So just another note of caution here, we have that the natural log of seven divided by the natural log of nine does not equal the natural log of seven divided by nine. And since we know that the natural log of seven divided by nine is equal to, or can be rewritten as by our quotient property, the natural log of seven minus the natural log of two. This just goes to show that when we divide the natural log of let's say seven, so this is, you know, according to problem A we had, if we divide natural log of 7 divided by the natural log of 2, it does not equal either one of those equations. So just remember to keep that in mind. Definitely keep that separate. It's another thing that happens a lot, even when you get higher up in math. People do it all the time. So remember that the natural log of 7 divided by 2, or in this case, is equal to the natural log of 7 minus the natural log of 2. But Together, they are not equal to natural log of seven divided by natural log of two. And you replace seven or two with any other number, it's the same thing. All right, moving on, we have example five, which is going to be number 34 and 35 in your book. And we want to use logarithms to solve the exponential equations. So in this case, we're going to use our, everything that we've learned so far, and we're going to solve our exponential equations here. So, let's start by taking the natural log of both sides. Since they don't have the same base, or they cannot possibly have the same base, we'll start with the natural log of both sides. If they seem like they have the same base, then we can use those rules instead, but they do not, so we'll use our natural log rule here. So we take the natural log of four to the x plus two power, is equal to the natural log of five to the x minus one power. And we'll take our exponents and multiply them to the natural log of our basis. So this is going to give us x plus two times the natural log of four is equal to x minus one times the natural log of five. So here, let us just divide by x minus one. So we end up getting x plus two times look, natural log. Oh man. Natural log of four divided by x minus one is equal to the natural log of five. And then we want to divide by the natural log of four. And this is going to give us x plus two divided by x minus one is equal to the natural log of five divided by the natural log of four. All right, and these are also written extremely close together, so let's move that over. All right, since we have these terms now, and they were more difficult to begin with, let's just solve for the natural log of five divided by the natural log of four, so we know what number we're working with. So if we use our calculators, we can find that the natural log of five divided by the natural log of four is about 0 0.456. All right. So now we have that x plus two divided by x minus one is equal to 4 point, 0 0.456. So now let's multiply x minus one back on either side. So we'll say times x minus one times x minus one. This is going to give us x plus two is equal to 0 
times x minus 1. So we can distribute our 0 0.456 to get x plus 2 is equal to 0 0.456x minus 0 0.456. And let's gooch this over just a little bit more so we need some more room. All right, so now we can subtract 2 on both sides. This should give us x is equal to 0 0.456x minus, let's see here, 1.544. And we can subtract 0 0.456x from both sides as well. And I've got to move this over to. All right, it's trying not to be a whole lot of writing. All right, so we have 0 0.544x is equal to negative 1.544. So we can divide by 0 0.544 on both sides to get x is equal to about negative 2.838. All right, and of course there's lots of different ways to solve for x in cases like these. This is just the way that I chose. So you can choose whether to keep natural logs of fours and natural logs of fives if you would like, maybe calculate them later on. Um, so you can do it any way that you would like. All right, let's do problem B here. So we have three to the one minus two x power is equal to five to the x plus five power. So let's do the same thing as before. We'll take the natural log of both sides. That is an x, there we go. All right, so we'll do the same thing. We'll take our exponents and multiply them to our, the natural log of our bases. So we get 1 minus 2x times the natural log of 3 is equal to x plus 5 times the natural log of 5. All right. So I'm going to do the same thing as I did before here. So let's divide by our natural log of three, both sides. This will give us one minus two x is equal to x plus five. And I'm just going to simplify this into one term. We could say the natural log of five divided by the natural log of three. And now we'll just divide each side by x plus 5. And then in this case, we'll get 1 minus 2x divided by x plus 5 is equal to the natural log of 5 times the natural log of 3. And we'll continue this over here. So now since we have this, we can simplify what our natural log of 5 divided by our natural log of 3 is by using a calculator. So this can give us 1 minus 2x divided by x plus 5 is equal to about 1.465. All right, so we want to simplify x. So let's multiply each side by x plus 5. And we get 1 minus 2x is equal to 1.465x plus 7.325. And we can subtract 1 on both sides. 
This should give us negative 2x is equal to 1.465x plus 6.325. And we can subtract 1.465x on both sides. And this is going to give us negative 3.465x is equal to 6.325. And we just want to divide each side by a negative 3.465. And finally, we get x is equal to about negative 1.425. Eight two five. All right, so that is how we would use our uh, the power property of logarithms on exponential equations to solve for our variable. Now we're gonna go into applications of these. So some of the most important applications of exponential and logarithmic functions arise in banking and finance. So we see that a lot of these things that we just solved for can come up a lot in banking and finance. So it's important to know these types of equations so that we can use them in real life applications. So for example, six, which is number 63 in your book, this is going to relate to business. So we have gambling revenues and billions of US dollars generated in Macau, China, can be approximated by the function g of x is equal to 1.104 times 1.346 to the power of x, where x is equal to 2 corresponds to the year 2002. So for example, x equals 0 is equal to the year 2000. Assume the model remains accurate and find the years in which the gambling revenues reached the indicated amounts. So for part A, we want to find when it's going to reach 20 billion. And for part B, we want to find when it reaches 45 billion. So let's set up our equations here. Let me just move B over just a little bit in anticipation for how large these problems might get. So for part A, we want to do 20 billion. And our equations here are already in billions of dollars. So all we have to do is set 20 equal to our equation. 20 in this case is our g of x value. So we have 20 is equal to 1.104 times 1.346 to the power of x. So first things first, let's just divide by 1.104. Just to get that out of the way. And this is going to give us, and I'm going to just reverse the equations. So I'm going to get 1.346x is equal to 18.116. So now that we have this equation, we want to use our power property as we did before so we can simplify our value of x, so we can isolate x. So let's do the natural log of 1.346 to the x power is equal to the natural log of 18.116. We know because of the power property, we're going to get x times the natural log of 1.346 which is equal to the natural log of 18.116. So now all we have to do is divide each side by the natural log of 1.346. Now we get that eight is equal to the, sorry, x is equal to the natural log of 18.116 divided by the natural log of 1.346. So now you want to use your calculator in order to calculate this equation here, which should give you about 9.75. 
And if x is equal to 9.75, and when x is equal to 2, that means 2002, then if x is equal to 9.75, this means that x is going to be equal to the year 2009. So we see that they will reach 20 billion in the year 2009. Specifically, we would see three quarters of the way into the year 2009. But we just need to know in which the year that it does happen, so we just pay attention to the year 2009. All right, so now we can do the same thing for problem B here. We can actually just move this over a little bit more. There we go. Which is 45 billion. So we're going to do the same thing as we did before, except instead of 20, we're using 45. So we get 45 is equal to 1.104 times 1.346 to the power of x. So let's do the same thing. We take the natural log, or we want to divide by 1.104 first. Then I'm going to flip the equation again. So we'll get 1.346x to the x power is equal to 40.761. And I'll also do the same thing as before. So we'll take the natural log of both sides. And we use our power property in order to get x times the natural log of 1.346 is equal to the natural log of 40.761. And then we just want to divide each side by our natural log of 1.346. And we get that x is equal to the natural log of 40.761 divided by our natural log of 1.346. So I encourage you to pause the video and calculate this on your own. And you should get 12.48. So this means they will reach 45 billion in the year 2012, or more specifically, about halfway through the year 2012. All right, so for our last example, we're going to see one more way that we can apply the things that we've learned into real life applications. So we have, for example, seven, which is also checkpoint eight in your book, we have, the decay function for carbon 14 is f of t is equal to y naught, or that y sub zero, of 0 0.5 to the power of t divided by 5,730. We wanna know how old is a skeleton that has lost 65% of its carbon 14. And we wanna use t equals zero corresponding to the time in years that the skeleton was first exposed. So, first things first, we want to set up our equation. So this question in specific, we're gonna be using the knowledge that we've used from previous sections as well as the knowledge from this section. And if we wanna set up our equation, we know that our skeleton has lost 65% of its carbon 14. This means that at the given time that we're trying to find, our skeleton has 35% of its original carbon 14. So we can set f of t equal to 35% or 0 0.35. So when we set up our equation here, we're going to say that y naught 
times 0 0.5 to the power of t divided by 5730 is equal to 0 0.35. And since we know that, or since we're saying that our f of t is 35% of the original, we would say 0 0.35 times, why not? So over here we can say f of t is equal to 0 0.35 of why not, or 35% of the original amount of carbon-14. All right, so now, first things first, we can just automatically divide by why not. Since we have a why not on both sides, we can divide, and they will just cancel each other out. So now we have 0 0.5 to the power of t divided by 5730 is equal to 0 0.35. Now what we want to do in order to use our power property that we have been using, we're going to take the natural log of both sides. So we're taking the natural log of 0 0.5 to the power of t divided by 5730 is equal to the natural log of 0 0.35. Now our power property allows us to take our exponent and multiply by the natural log of our base. So we're going to get t divided by 5730 times the natural log of 0 0.5 is equal to the natural log of 0 0.35. All right, so now we want to divide each side by the natural log of 0 0.5 just to get rid of that. So we know it's going to cancel on this side. And we're going to get t divided by 5,730 is equal to the natural log of 0 0.35 divided by the natural log of 0 0.5. Now let's multiply each side by 5,730. So we'll cancel on that side. And just so we're not going super low here, let's just pull this equation up to the side here. And we're going to get t is equal to 5,730 times the natural log of 0 0.35 divided by the natural log of 0 0.5. Now I invite you to pause the video and calculate this on your own. And if you did, you should have gotten 8,679 years old. And that makes it for one very old skeleton. So in cases such as maybe historical or science, um, science-based applications, we see we can use these uh, facts and properties as ways to maybe find out things that relate to decay functions or exponential growth functions or really anything that has to do with business or finance in these cases. So this just goes to show that the facts that we've learned and the properties that we've learned about logarithmic and exponential equations are actually very useful in real life applications. So that concludes our section 4.4. Once again, if you have any questions at all, you can always feel free to email me or put in a question in our uh, anonymous question form for your homeworks. Um, so that concludes what we have for section 4.4. Um, don't hesitate to contact me at all if you have any questions about this material, and I will see you virtually later.